I think this is probably the third pro hearings event that I've done. I've been the chief executive of Beowulf Mining now for seven years, since 2014. Some things ha have changed within the company, actually quite a lot, um, and some things have stayed the same. Uh, it could be described that we have one project that sits in the valley of death, but uh, I assure you that I've turned up this morning and I am very much alive, and, and this company, Beowulf, is also very much alive. When we wrote our annual report this year, um, we wanted to uh, define our purpose for our employees in the company, but also our stakeholders and, and importantly our investors. And our purpose is to be a responsible company, to be an innovative company. Clearly we need to deliver value for shareholders, uh, it, otherwise we won't get any investment capital to do, to do what we need to do. But more importantly, and especially um, in the themes that have been developing over the last two to three years, is about delivering the metals that society needs to, uh, for the products, and ser products uh, that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. And also with some big issues like addressing climate emergency, electrifying society. And really, the only way we can do this is to show a great deal of respect to our stakeholders and also to partner with all our stakeholders and to collaborate with people that are operating and companies that are operating and regulators that are operating in this space. By all working together, we can make a success. Belf is quite diversified. When I joined the company in 2014, what we were most well known for is our Kallax project and really that has not changed. Kallax sits in north of Sweden, north of the Arctic Circle. Um, its positioning is lending itself to, uh, to sit at the top of the fos developing fossil-free supply chain in Norbotten and to leverage the, the huge capability that Norbotten has in terms of renewable power. So it's, I believe that the time for a project like Kallak is now. In Finland, we have a business called Grafintech, which Beowulf acquired in 2016. Grafintech, um, as a traditional mining company, you might say, we started off with doing uh, ex exploration work, we defined a resource, and we've um, been doing project development studies. But really, Grafintech's uh, vision this year has changed into one of trying to play downstream and to be in the anode, anode materials production space and, and part of the uh, developing battery sector within Europe. And then in 2018, we made our first investment into Kosovo, and we invested and backed a management team of Vardar Minerals. And Vardar is looking for base metals and precious metals. That part of Europe is a very interesting uh, geological area, and other countries within the Balkans have already been explored, and, and mines are being developed by other companies. And Kosovo is the next address, which is also of interest. And a year ago, I, I was... Uh, in the final stages of completing a capital raising where Beowulf raised 83 million sec. And uh, the majority of that money, uh, around 80% of the funds that we raised, all came from uh, the Swedish market. As most of you probably know, Beowulf is listed on the Spotlight Exchange here in Stockholm, and we're over 73% owned by Swedish shareholders. The portfolio is diversified such that we've got a range of metals that we're exposed to. With Kallak, we've got iron ore. Iron ore, you know, a lot of talk is about uh, critical raw materials, but iron ore is the foundation of green infrastructure and the demand going forward is going to be significant. With graphite, you know, graphite goes into the anodes which go into lithium ion batteries which go into electric vehicles and also renewable batteries, new renewable storage batteries. With copper in, in the Balkans, we have uh, a, a metal that is used for electrification of society. And then we've also got zinc and gold in the portfolio. Again, going back to drafting the annual report for investors this year, um, Beowulf has been practicing uh, environmental, social and governance in, in different parts of our business. And, and you will have heard the acronym ESG get talked about a lot in uh, investor circles and, and by companies. And what we have done as a company is to really put our foot on the ESG road this year. 
to start to bring together um, what areas we need to work on and to communicate the work that we are doing to our stakeholders. And so currently we are finalizing a human rights policy, we are finalizing a sustainability statement, and we're also reviewing all our governance documents. And these will all be part of our annual report for next year. So moving on to CALAC. As I said, CALAC is really a project for its time. We, its positioning in Norbotten enables us to be thinking about uh, a fossil-free mining project, one that we can plug in certain parts of the operation to the grid and use renewable electricity, and also with the developments taking place in uh, hydrogen production, we can also think about new types of mobile equipment such that we don't use diesel on the operation. So this is the vision. Its proximity to projects, especially uh, H2 Green Steel, which got announced in February, I think, of this year, makes it uh, very attractive. Um, Norbutton has been described as the breadbasket of uh, potential breadbasket of Europe. It has mines, it has renewable power, and it has great logistics. And Calac sits within that ecosystem. I believe that the market, customers, you know, not Hubert, clearly, but H2 Green Steel want to see diversified sources of supply within the market. They don't want to be forced to just go and buy 68% uh, pellet from uh, LKB. So there is room for competition in the market, and I think that's a healthy feature. Um, but in order for investors to come into projects like uh, H2 Green Steel, they need to see that there's transparency and predictability in the permitting processes, something that the government has talked about for many years, but is, which is sorely absent at the moment. Uh, and nothing seems to have changed there during the time that I've been working in Sweden. But in order to get these projects on stream in the time frame that we need to see them to address climate emergency, change needs to happen. So these are the three things that I think are most <coughs> important to remember about CALAC. We've actually made quite a lot of progress in the last year. Um, a year ago, just over a year ago, we reassessed the test work that we'd done on the kind of concentrate that we could produce from CALAC. In 2015, we, we coined the phrase super concentrate because we could produce a 71.5% iron content concentrate that is clean. And and our consultant that assisted us at the time looked at the test work that had been done in the context of what we see in the market at the moment in current producers and also what we see in terms of future production and its market leading. In May of this year, we upgraded the resource estimate for Calac, so we've increased the size, the scale of the, the resource to just to almost 389 million tonnes of mineralisation. That includes Calac North, Calac South, and our exploration licences to the south, Parque Yara. We also did a mining study. Uh, that mining study has focused on Calac North because that's what we're, we're applying for an exploitation concession. Um, and what we needed from that study was to be able to, to talk to the likes of Traffic Verket or Inlandsbahn then about the volume of production that we would need to put on the railway and also to be able to speak to customers like H2 Green Steel and others about the tonnage of material that we would be, be able to produce and the quality of that material. So that was an important study for us to do. And then just returning to the location, you know, we're 40 kilometers from the Inlandsbahn. Once you're on that, you're connected to the Malmbahn and you've got the port of Narvik to the north, you've got the port of Lulio to the south, and then you've got new establishments like H2 Green Steel and we had the opportunity to plug into the uh, renewable electricity grid. Again, you know, you may disagree with me, but I think Calic is a project for its time because it does two things. Um, iron ore and high quality iron ore is gonna be in an increasing demand um, for projects such as Hubert and H2 Green Steel. Uh, Europe needs to be self-sufficient or develop its self-sufficiency in raw material supply across commodities, not just iron ore. The direction of travel is climate emergency and, and, and a transition to a green economy. A green infrastructure is going to be the foundation of that transition. 
Not only is Calic important to the environment, um, but it's also important to the municipality in Yokmok. It creates hundreds of jobs. It brings hundreds, billions of sec of investment to the community and, uh, and tax revenues that could last for a year and fund the public services and infrastructure that rural economies, uh, rural communities rely on. So it's from that perspective, it's very exciting. Now, the one thing that hasn't changed, and Calic is a project that I, dis I described as potentially sitting in the valley of death, is that we are still waiting for an exploitation concession. But it's never boring when I come to Sweden, and yesterday was quite an interesting day. Uh, in the last hour of trading with Beowulf, the share price jumps close to 15%, just on the news, I think, that the Green Party has left the government. Now, we believe that projects like Calac can be developed in harmony with the environment and in partnership with stakeholders in the community. And uh, I've been long enough in this industry to have done that in my past career. So uh, I believe that a mining company has a role in society, both to produce those metals, but also to partner with communities. And, and we've had success in, in the seven years that I've been going to Yokmok, you know, working with the, the Landowners Association, working the, with the municipality, working with the local entrepreneurs, despite what you might read in the newspapers, uh, and they always seem to use the negative pictures that were produced in 2013. There's a lot of positives that come from a mining project like Calac that sits in a municipality like Yorkmok. How am I doing for time? Uh, you're fine. Okay, Go for it. so quick glass of water. So if we move on to Finland now on Grafintech, the battery space is, uh, is a very exciting place to be at the moment, and you'll hear more of that, about that probably from Leading Edge. We started off in the traditional way, develop a, a mining asset, uh, our I to Lampy project. But this year in March, we signed a memorandum of understanding with an Indian company called Ad Epsilon Advanced Materials. And our vision with Epsilon and the discussions that we've been having with Epsilon are about establishing an anode materials plant in Finland. Our vision with Grafintech has never been to simply be a miner. Our vision is to move downstream, is to produce the raw material, uh, not just the raw materials, but the value added materials that cell manufacturers need to make lithium ion batteries. And we are very well supported within the Finnish battery cluster. The state is very involved uh, and we have benefited from great support from Business Finland. So these are the three elements really of Grafintech. I've touched on the memorandum of understanding with Epsilon Advanced Materials. I was in India in September for a week, a week visiting their operations. And uh, no surprise really that you can make so much more progress when you're actually sitting in front of each other than you can do when you've been speaking for months on end to somebody on Zoom and sending ba e emails back and forth. It was a very productive visit. And, and really our thinking and the, the, the opportunity for establishing this plant in Finland has really moved forward quite some, some way. Now, the starting point was always to have a production base in Finland that could provide the feed material to an anode materials plant. And so this year with, with Italampi, we have been, and we're still in the final stages of completing a scoping study on that project. Uh, and our, you know, plan is to, to basically, as I've described it, create a resource footprint that if Finland starts to permit graphite mines, can then feed uh, the plants that need to produce the anode materials necessary to make lithium ion batteries in Finland. And finally, again, similar to, to Calac, uh, the company has a strong sustainability focus. And, and with both uh, a mine, infrastructure, consume, customer, trying to get a seamless integration of uh, that supply chain, trying to get a common understanding of ESG criteria, such that you can demonstrate to stakeholders that you are doing everything that would be expected of a responsible business. This is also what we're trying to embed in the development of our of Grafintech. And finally, with batteries from Finland, we were very successful in the summer. We, we received another grant from Business Finland of just short of 800,000 euros. That was the second time that we received money from F Business Finland. And that funding goes into a, a 1.6 million euro budget, 
which we are using to do the project development studies for the anode materials plant. We, we've, we've got a good relationship with Business Finland. Um, we take that relationship very import importantly and, um, and we're looking to, to work with them going forward. And then finally on Batrace, Batrace is a project around understanding the traceability of where our raw materials come from. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion within the Nordic countries around uh, where, does the, where does the metal come from that sits within our phones or the batteries in our electric vehicles or in, our data, in other app products that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. And, uh, and I've heard a lot of talk about sort of self-sufficiency and if, if we can develop these uh, metals within the countries in which we live, then we should do that rather than export our needs to other parts of the world which may be operating to lower standards and, and not necessarily treating um, employees or work or communities in the way that they should be treated. Um, but I've yet to see that actually translate into permitting mines. Uh, I, we haven't seen a new mine permitted in Sweden for over 10 years. And finally, the investment that we made in Vardar in 2018. So Vardar presented us uh, with a very intelligent exploration model. Uh, two licenses, Mitrovica and Viti, with a range of commodities. Uh, most of the work that's been done by Vardar has been on the Mitrovica license, which has got lead, zinc, copper and gold and silver. And I'll come on to the next slide and, and, and give you some more information on Mitrovica. And then with Viti, we've got copper, gold and lithium. The Tethian Belt is a really interesting geological region of... Uh, the, of Southeast Europe, um, in Serbia has seen a lot of investment, Bulgaria also, so the Balkan countries, other Balkan countries are benefiting from uh, investment capital and also exploration and mining development and Kosovo is the next address on that list. And we, even though shareholders might have wondered why we were investing in Kosovo, the reason we did it, and it's the same with Grafintech, is that we have a team that is solely focused on the development of that business and creating value for shareholders. So coming on to Mitrovica, during the final stages of the capital raising last year, we were putting out announcements on a regular basis about exploration results at Mitrovica. And uh, at some times, I was even slightly confused because I had, had my head trying to raise money for the company and also at the same time trying to communicate clearly to our investors about what, what, what the results meant. What we have with Metrovica is uh, all the constituent elements of a major mineralized system, which we believe is a, a porphyry mineralized system. And, and Vardar is using uh, advanced exploration techniques and what they're finding is that of various layers of information, soil ge geochemistry, so metals in soils, um, alteration, uh, rocks that have been altered by fl fluids coming into them, structural information that they're seeing, and then lastly, what we were reporting on was uh, ge geophysical exploration results. These layers of information are giving us this picture which is bit growing to show that we have several targets within the Mitrovica license. Wolf Mountain to the north, which is a lead sink silver target, and then uh, Majan Peak, a gold target. And both within the license and sitting outside the license where we, there is a historical mine called Stan Turg, which is still in operation today and has been running since the 1930s. This whole picture gives you all the elements that you need for a porphyry mineralized system. So, you know, both with Grafintech and with Vardar, it's my job to better articulate the value case of what we have in Kosovo. And we nearly own 50% of the company now. The pictures on the right give you an, um, a pictorial, pictorial representation of where two rock types meet. The picture to the, the lower picture, the white blobs, are the geophysical anomalies that were identified last year. And the lines coming from surface are the drill holes, which we drilled in 2019, which did not hit the geophysical anomalies. Now, that's 
either a good thing or a bad thing. But what that does mean is that this is our focus going into the next phase of drilling. Uh, and we hope that we will be able to, in the, in the coming weeks, to, to start a drilling campaign in Kosovo. So this is very exciting. Kurt, yeah. three, minutes. three minutes, okay. I'm almost done. <coughs> so yeah, just in summary, the reason Kosovo is really attractive, it's, it's close to Europe. And Europe, Europe is going to have a huge appetite for metals um, to enable it to transition to a green economy. So that's why we have both the geological opportunities, the exploration results findings. We have a jurisdiction that is really keen on us to come to Kosovo and invest. Uh, and is very supportive, and uh, we're looking forward to starting in the next drill program. Final slide. So just in summary, the company has a strong focus on sustainability. We've put together uh, an interesting portfolio of uh, metals. Um, each of our business areas has a management team which is focused on that business area. So to some investors, it might look slightly confused. I assure you, this is not a confused situation. This is a very focused situation on Kalak in Sweden and getting the exploitation concession for Kalak and taking the project to the next stage of project development, completing a scoping study, moving on to pre-feasibility. With uh, Grafintech, it's about building the business case for a nanomaterials plant in Finland and I'm working with our joint venture uh, potential joint venture partner, Epsilon Advanced Materials. And then in Vardar, it's about that further stage of exploration and hopefully uh, achieving a discovery of which there's every science that we will do that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, so much. No, 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 no. Back on the spot. <laughs> uh, uh, tell us about the cooperation with Epsilon Advanced Material. That is done to supply the next chain, the north vaults of the world uh, and, and battery production facilities with a more uh, advanced uh, product. Yes, yeah, so anode material. I guess from our standpoint, much of the investments that we have seen uh, in Europe and the Nordic region have been both gigafactories, but also uh, cathode, fa cathode materials factories. Um, and, and we haven't seen so much uh, investment in or discussion around anode material. And so clearly you need both an anode and a cathode to manufacture a lithium ion battery. So again, the starting point is uh, developing a resource, which is the Itilampi project, um, but also being in a very supportive environment in Finland, um, you know, the, the state support that we've received from Business Finland to, to move downstream instead of just stay, do the classic and stay upstream as a miner. And uh, yeah, we're making good progress with our discussions with Epsilon. Uh, and like I say, you know, we made uh, significant steps forward when I visited India. I'll just remind you that uh, for, for a coming presentation, we will see another similar collaboration and, and uh, uh, making the best batteries possible. It's, yeah. it's huge. It's everything, yeah. basically. So, so this is very interesting. Um, OK, let's move. Uh, time is short. But we, we should talk about uh, Kalak and, and what's left of the approvals and uh, uh, the Swedish government uh, will, will, will share some more insights on that. Uh, but uh, if, if Kallak is starting, how profitable would it be? And do you have a recent PA on, on Kallak? Just give us some. Yeah, so, so what has, uh, the unusual thing about Kallak is that uh, we as a company uh, have found it difficult to continue to invest in a project for which we aren't being granted the permit. So as you will have heard me say before, the company has done all the work necessary to be granted an exploitation concession. Uh, and the government critici was criticized a year ago for not having done any work on the application yeah. for three years. And then we're another year down the road. And so it's, you know, you, you will have seen that over the last year, we have done work on the project because I've taken the decision that, uh, you know, this is sensible to do. But in terms of actually doing the full comprehensive scoping study assessment, we had to put that on hold in 2017 because there's no guarantee that decision's coming. 
Uh, and even though ministers talk about forthcoming decisions and they talk about transparency, predictability, none of that has happened. So there's a lot of words, but there's not much action. Yeah. And that's not good for investor confidence. Yeah, it's, uh, it's more arbitrary, randomized. Uh, it's the uh, Swedish Employers Federation call it not legally uh, uh, okay, not mm. safe. <laughs> no, no. Uh, anyone want, uh, we're on a tight schedule here, but anyone want a short final question to Beowulf? Oh, I'm sorry, that was the wrong guiding on me. Thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Thank you.